Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Watch Story Examination. When I did that, well, let me begin with when I got the article. When I first received the article from the Awake magazine, the 1966 article, when I read it, I felt this eeriness about it. The thing just feels, it just felt evil. And when I thought to do the video, I'd actually rented a car for the weekend because I had to do a lot of running around before the Christmas. And it would have been a little inconvenient on foot. And so I rented a vehicle. And I got up and thought to do the video, then return the vehicle. But the thing just felt so eerie, I felt like, let me just, since I have the car, let me just go on the road and shoot the video on the road because I really felt that sitting in the room to do it would have felt a little eerie. And I'm glad I did. And I said that in the video yesterday, why am I saying it again? I'm saying it again to make the point that it really was a good decision because, ladies and gentlemen, I gave you the preview video regarding what Anthony Morris said about cooperating with the secular authorities, the hypocrisy of it with the organization refusing to participate in the redress scheme in Australia. I thought it were, it, that subject needs to be revisited because I watched a video where it was revealed that the organization still has a small window to change their mind by taking up the offer, as it were, by the end of the year. And we are almost at the end of the year. So I wanted to discuss that. I did the preview video about the revelation that over 7,500 Jehovah's Witnesses have died as a result of COVID, which means that the Jehovah's Witnesses are faring four times worse than the rest of the world with COVID. That, I believe, is very important to discuss in light of what the governing body has been saying to Jehovah's Witnesses about COVID from the start. There is a video that I want to do where Examine for Yourself made another ridiculous comment. But the reason I respond to his ridiculous comments is because I recognize that I'm not just responding to Examine for Yourself. I'm responding to Jehovah's Witnesses because he represents their thought process. That is why. It's not about him. There is the issue with the Watchtower organization suing a music company over the use of a song that I will be discussing right after this video because I find it so repulsive and I'll explain why. I find it disgusting. I find it disgraceful and I will explain in the next video. I'm saying all of that to say that there are, oh, not to mention, not to mention the revelation that the, the organization, the confirmation that the organization is in decline. I'm saying all of that to say there are other things I want to talk to you about. But I woke up this morning just thinking about that article. And funny enough, time was against me because I had to return the vehicle. So there was something important that I never touched on, that I want to touch on now. 
and speak a little bit about this matter. For those of you who did not see the previous video, you would have to watch it in order to understand. And so I've placed a link in the card and in the description. If you don't see that video, what I'm saying here will not make sense to you, except for this little part. Imagine yourself when the young man fell in the pool. His father instantly, the lake, his father instantly dived in to save his son. He did not take off his clothes. He never think for a second to back off his shirt. But to, because this is urgent. This is no time to think about backing off shirt. Your son is drowning. And so he goes to rescue his son and he takes him to the surface. He took him to the surface. He was alive when he took him to the surface. But struggling to breathe and moving to, in that struggle to breathe, he wrestled out of his father's hand and fell back in the lake. Can you imagine the horror? that you would have felt as a father is like, oh my God, because you came this close to saving his life. You took him up, he is still alive, he's still breathing, and then he drops back into the lake. And for five minutes, he could not be found. But even so, when they finally found his body and took him back, they were making an attempt at resuscitation. There were those who were applying first aid with the hope, hoping beyond hope, that the young man would still be alive, that they could get a pulse. How do you? Because the, 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 the article, the letter was written by the mom, but she spoke about the father going to witness to the police and someone I'll be I'll actually be doing another video on this because ladies and gentlemen this is not just an article because I spend the time let me put my phone on airplane mode I was saying with all the other things that are on my mind to do a video about I woke up this morning still thinking about the article and then I read through some comments which were quite revealing because I am to find out that that was not just an article it is actually Jehovah's Witness culture it is actually their culture I read a comment I will tell you about it two videos down the road I read a comment that last night well some will say this morning shortly after midnight I live in an apartment I have neighbors upstairs I laughed so loud I could not control it it was so funny something I should not laugh about but I found the thing so funny I'll tell you about it two videos down the road. I, I don't want to distract from the point of this video because this video is really a serious message to Jehovah's Witnesses because one of the things I learned, I remember there was some article, I, I can't recall if it was Watchtower or Awake where it was said that people in some, maybe I think it's African country, but some developing country or underdeveloped country where people are crossing a lake with alligators or crocodiles. Don't know which is which. I can never tell them apart. But uh, uh, let me say crocodile for argument's sake. A crocodile infested lake. People are crossing that lake to attend Watchtower meetings. And in the United States now, 
that story would be told to Jehovah's Witnesses to say, imagine those people. They have to face danger to attend our meetings. And you who live in a privileged country where attending meetings is so easy and so convenient and you are not coming to meetings. And it is pretty much, pretty much the same thing that is going on here, a similar thing that's going on here. Their son died and they did not miss the assembly. What is your excuse? And so, Jehovah's Witnesses, as I am reading the comments, I began thinking about you. Because you may be reading the comments and you are thinking to yourself, what is wrong with these people? You are thinking to yourself that these people are not spiritual. You probably are thinking to yourself that Job did not mourn when his children died because he had faith. And that is good. You are thinking to yourself that all of this is, is good. Because these people are trusting in God. So they are not mourning. And we want you to understand that we are not saying that trusting in the resurrection is a bad thing. No. We are not saying that you should be putting your hand on your head and wailing and moaning for several days. No. That's not what we are saying. We are saying, Jehovah's Witnesses, that it is normal human behavior to be bereaved. It is so funny that prior to doing this video, I looked on the watchtower giving counsel to, 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 to married people about how to cope with the loss of their spouse. Because it is, a, it, it, it is naturally a grieving process. But I want you, please, Jehovah's Witnesses, watch that video and read the comments. See if you can understand how abnormal this is. And there is an important point that some persons made that I missed when I did the video. I actually thought about it but in the rush to complete the video before I return the car. Jesus is, the, the, the lady said that when her son died, she immediately thought about Jesus' words that he is the resurrection and the life. Well, the very one, the very person who has the power of life and death, the very person who is the resurrection and the life, cried when he heard that Lazarus died. And for whatever reason you want to put on why Jesus cried, he cried because he became a man. It is human behavior. And you would not have lost your humanity to cry that your son died. And it was, it was not a, a, a show of faith, but a show of cruelty to ask children to attend an assembly listening to messages that they as children may not even be able to understand, but even if they can understand it. When they have just lost their brother in death, it is not normal to ask them to go on with their lives as though nothing happened. This incident took place in 1966. But when I read it, 
you need to understand that I'm not looking on the historical context. I am looking on what is being presented at the time. So at the time, a woman lost her son. A father lost his son. It was not a case that he was diagnosed with cancer and died in hospital. He literally died, was struggling for life in his hands, and then fell out of his hands and died. And the organization would paint that as normal behavior, would paint that as show of faith, as a way to control you to think that if you do not attend a watchtower assembly, you are demonstrating a lack of faith. It is a, it's a control mechanism to take away from you your humanity, to keep you loyal to an organization is not of God. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you.